loving me I loving you Mothers and fathers Husbands and wives Sisters and brothers Friends for life Won't live in the past All I wanna do now Is making it last Good evening and welcome to Making It Last. I'm your host, Noreen Daly, and this evening, it is all about strengthening your relationships, whatever the relationship is, whether it is at work, whether it is on a personal level, but it's all about having better relationships. And for those of us living here in Jamaica, you know that we definitely need to work on having better relationships. Now, today... The question that will be answered, or that we hope will be answered, is how do I create the best version of myself? And I do have a lovely lady sitting right beside me who will be helping me to answer that question for you, for us. We all go through a rough spots. And unless you have the mindset that you should never give up, you will allow those rough spots to actually bury you. Now, I did tell you earlier that I have a lovely young lady. Well, young is relative, but I I have a lovely young lady in studio with me. You see, when you have your friends and you get an opportunity to do something like this, you can do that on air because she cannot do anything about it. But her name is Eva Ford. And currently, she's the president of the Jamaica Association of Social Workers. She's the author of the book, How Not to Practice Social Work, and a self-proclaimed personal improvement junkie. That's... I think that last word is probably why we're friends. Now, Eva, welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Feeling older, though. (laughs) It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now, we want to answer the question, Eva, well, how do I create the best version of myself? But before we, we, we get to answering that question, tell us how then is this self-created or how then do I know who I am? Right. So that's, that's always, um, kind of a, kind of a loaded question. I say that because it's one of those questions that you cannot get out of life without asking at some point, you know, so we all ask it in different ways. Some people ask the question, what's my purpose in life? Sometimes it's asks, you know, asks, like you said, who am I? What am I doing here? Um, and I think it calls us to really not just question who we are, but it's an opportunity for us to find out mm-hmm. the source of where we came from and how powerful we are and how powerful that God source that we come from is mm-hmm. in our lives. So, to answer your question, you know, you know, wh- that question, who who, are, I? who am I? Who am I? It just invites us to, to look deeper at where we really come from. And how then is this important mm-hmm. to how I am in relationships? Because this show is all right. about relationships, mm-hmm. how we're going to make sure that your relationships are better after listening to the show. So why then is this whole idea of knowing who I am mm-hmm. important to the t- sorts of relationships that I will have mm-hmm. or that I am having? Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. Um, I'll, I'll answer the question, but I want to start with an example. I was speaking to one of my, a student that I supervise up to yesterday. And the student, a young lady was telling me that she, we were talking about relationships and she was talking about a relationship that she had been in and her significant other at the time had cheated on her four times. And she was saying, you know, um, yeah, this, it's, it's how it goes. And, you know, I took him back four times. And so, you know, Nothing is wrong with that. Now, she said she's no longer with him, but I made the blatant statement that that's stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. It's a little harsh. It's a little harsh, but I made, I I made it in, I made it to her because she could take it. But what I really meant was, and what I said to her was, you don't understand who you are. You don't understand your value for you to continue to allow yourself to be lied to, Mm. cheated on, and continue now. You can't blame the other person now. But for you to allow yourself to to be used in that relationship speaks to your 
misunderstanding of who you are. Because that means you think you are a, a, a commodity. You, th- you know, you think that you can be, uh, or, or that you don't matter. That's what it means. It means that you don't know enough about your value. It means that you don't know enough about um, how how special and unique that you are. So when you don't know who you are, then your behavior, right? Your behavior reflects those of a person who doesn't, like I said, doesn't value themselves, mm-hmm. doesn't doesn't put make themselves a priority, and puts other people as a priority above among above mm-hmm. themselves. Right? Did I say that right? Right. Yes. When you're not valuing mm-hmm. yourself, you make other people the priority and not you. So you know, it's really important again to know who you are, and it's not even something that we can answer fully in this discussion because Mm -hmm. it's a process it's a lifelong process i'm constantly learning about who i am and and through this growing process i'm changing i'm growing different experiences give me different opportunities to learn different things about myself Mm -hmm. Um, but i think when you have the courage and the willingness to really dig deep and find out why did i react the way i reacted why do i think the way i think um is there another perspective that I could take? And mm-hmm. you challenge the programs that are going on in your head that gives you a greater opportunity to grow, to really get to know who you are mm-hmm. at a deeper level. And, you know, the, the, the converse of that is when you make yourself a high priority, other people do the same thing or they get out of your way. True. True, yeah. true. You, you, you said something just now, though, that I really would want us to, to delve in a little bit more. You spoke about the whole idea of, of being programmed to some, some extent. And, and how then, where does this programming take place? Mm-hmm. Is it an ongoing process? Is it that you, 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 is it just based on your socialization? Mm-hmm. Where does this programming take place? And why is it therefore important that you pay attention to what is being programmed, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, into your being, mm-hmm, so to speak? Mm-hmm. And so I, I love this concept and I'm not an expert yet. Uh, however, I, I, as a social worker, I'm a trained social worker. You know, we study uh, theories of sociology and psychology and social welfare. And so we get a chance to see uh, how our society influences us and influences our thinking. Um, we look at how your family life and your upbringing influences your thinking and your behavior. Um, but the other thing that I'm getting into recently is learning about the brain and how the brain is such an amazing machine. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, up to age, the scientists and, and specialists say about age seven, we're, we're, you know, we're blank sheets. So a child is born, you're born into the world, and you are a blank canvas, right? You don't speak any language. There's no particular food that you like. There's no particular race that you're more uh, attracted to. You are a blank canvas. Mm-hmm. So if you take... If you take a look at your upbringing and consider we're in Jamaica, a lot of people, um, let's say you like ackee and saltfish, right? Let's say you love ackee and saltfish. Well, guess what? If you were raised by a family in India, you would never know ackee and saltfish. And as a matter of fact, maybe the first time you tasted it, you would hate it. So, so that's just an example of mm-hmm. how we're programmed, mm-hmm. right? Someone had to introduce that to you, whether it was your parent or your caregiver or... Um, a friend, somebody had to introduce it to you. And l- more than likely, it was introduced to you in a way where or at a time where you felt safe and you felt comfortable. Most of us, if if let's say using this, this idea of ackee and saltfish again, let's say um, the first time I have ackee and saltfish is at my m- grandmother's funeral. Hmm. I'm go- I may associate that and selfish, I with, can't selfish with, death. with death or with or with sadness or mm-hmm. it might not be something that I I love. And it doesn't matter whether or not I can explain to you why I don't like it. But that programming that takes place, right? People are scared of dogs and cats well into adulthood, having no idea that when they were two years old, 
their mother took them to a park and there was a, a dog that ran after them and they were scared at two years old. You don't remember that, but you were programmed. Um, so again, you know, for me, this has been such an empowering, uh, idea because it gives me an opportunity to look at my biases, my likes, my dislikes and question them. I don't, I don't have to just accept them anymore Good. as, you know, well, I like this person because I like this person and that's, that's it. If I'm right, I don't have to do that. I can actually say, hmm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's another perspective I could consider. Maybe I could grow from this. And, you know, it gives me an opportunity to, you know, just be a better person. Like I, I like myself a lot better when I'm open minded as opposed yes. to when I'm closed and rigid. Right. And I think people like me better, too, because that allows me to hear other perspectives um, without mine always getting in the way. Hmm. So so, again, it goes back to knowing who you are. And even if you don't know who you are right now, know enough to know that I don't know who I am, but I can learn. <laughs> so I think if yes. you can if you can start there, start, you know, I don't know who I am or I'm learning who I am or there's a lot more about me that I don't know yet. If you can at least make that declaration, you've already started the, right. in, in a great on journey, you know, on a journey in a great space, as opposed to the person that says, no, man, that, you know, this is my perspective and I'm not changing. So, yeah, if it is that you're just joining us, you were just listening to the voice of Eva Ford. And this is the show making it last. And I'm your host, Noreen Daly. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Sisters and brothers, friends forever, strengthening the ties that keep us together. This is Making It Last and I'm Noreen Daly and this show is all about relationships and how to have better relationships. It's really about strengthening the ties that keep us together. And today we are talking about how to create the best version. How do I create the best version of myself? And Eva, we're talking about just now in terms of just giving background info, so to speak, in terms of how then do you know who you are? Mm -hmm. And and to some extent, it's because of your past. Mm -hmm. Now, a friend of mine sent me some information recently. Mm, really? <laughs> yes. And one of the reasons it is important to have a good idea of self and who you are is that in all of your relationships, in terms of relationships right across the board, mm -hmm. you are the common denominator in all of those relationships. Talk to us a little bit about that. That's right. And I always say that too. In any failed relationship mm -hmm. you've had, and if you've reached, you know, 20, certainly by, you know, 30 or 40, you, if you're not in a successful relationship, then you would have had some failed ones, probably. You are the common denominator. That's to say, you know, a lot of times people, because I coach as well, mm -hmm. and people will say, oh, you know, I never choose the right partner, or people are always, you know, pushing me over or trying to get over on me. And at some point, you have to stop looking at people. And you have to look at yourself because you are the common denominator. You are the single consistent factor in any one of your relationships. So if the majority of them are successful, you absolutely have a lot to do with that. But if the majority of them are hurtful or manipulative or negative, you, again, mm -hmm. absolutely have something to do with it too. But what I say about that is, you know, the powerful thing about that is if you accept this concept, mm -hmm. right? Um, like in Mission Impossible, if you accept this challenge, if you accept this concept, it gives you unlimited power to transform your future. A lot of us, I think, are stuck in the past. And so we talk about what hasn't gone right or why things are the way they are. And there's nothing wrong with rehearsing the past as long as it's propelling you to the future. But a lot of times what we do is we rehearse the past 
and we continue to rehearse the past in the present. So we, we're not mm. creating a future. We just continue to create new versions of the past. So, you know, again, this concept of you are the common denominator in any one of your relationships, you know, again, speaks to what kind of relationship now do you want to create or what kind of relationships do you want to have in your life? And again, we're not just talking about romantic relationships. That's right. We're talking about familial relationships. We're talking about relationships with your peers and your colleagues and, you know, coworkers. What kind of relationship do you want to have with the environment? What kind of relationships do you want to have with strangers that you meet, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and it's not just, again, one-sided. What kind of relationship do you want those persons to have with you as well? And re- recognize is that you are powerful beyond measure. So you get to create it the way you want it. And I think a lot of us create by default. Um, and, and, you know, creating is a God-given uh, gift mm-hmm. that we all have, right? God's given us the gift of choice, and he's made us creative beings um, as women. I mean, you can't get more creative than being able to create life, yes. right? Well, that's women and men, I suppose, but... <laughs> You know. Yes. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're talking. Fair. Okay. We're talking a lot in terms of who who you are and how how this whole idea of self is created. So then I'm I'm here sitting in my living room and I'm saying, how then, Eva and Noreen? How then do I become this better version that I want to be? So I I recognize that there are about three principles. Mm-hmm. So principle one, the first principle would be check your mindset, recognize you've been programmed. Yeah. So everything that we've been talking about so far has been really about your mindset, right? How do you think? And what do you think about? What is, what is on your mind consistently? And what are the types of thoughts, the qualities of your thoughts that you focus on on a daily basis, right? Because your mindset is really what sets the precedent for everything else. So we've got to start there. We've got to start with what's your mindset? You know, check it. If if you're a person that, again, is usually focused on things going wrong or you're pessimistic or you're mm-hmm. focused on problems, um, not to say that there's not value in that exercise sometimes, but you don't want your focus to be there, right? So what you want to do is you want to recognize that you have the power. You absolutely have the power to change your programming. So if... If you look at your life and you're getting the results that you want in your life, maybe you're, maybe your programming is quite fine. Maybe you got the CLS class version okay. and you're, you're good. But most of us <laughs> will want an upgrade. You know? Well, I recognize you actually just touched on the second principle is recognize that you're responsible and have the power Absolutely. to change the programming. And the last principle is let everyone else off the hook and seek to make yourself happy. Don't look to others to make you happy. So let me qualify and say this is probably the last principle we have time to talk about, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but definitely not the Mm -hmm. last principle. But again, it's taking ownership. It's this idea that I am responsible. So that means if Noreen steps on my foot, I don't have to be mad at you. I don't have to. Being mad at you is a choice. It's a reaction. I can actually choose to recognize that, you know what, I shouldn't have been standing there. Or if I was on time like I would have been on time, you wouldn't have even been in the vicinity to step on my foot. That's so right. so letting other people off the hook for whatever you feel um, they're doing to you. No one's doing anything to you. It's really about your perception, right? It's really about the way you think. And that again, back to principle number one, what's your mindset? That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Thanks so much for joining us on this or making it last show. How do I create a better version of myself was the topic that we dealt with. And to answer that question, these were the principles. One, check your mindset. Recognize you have been programmed. Principle number two, recognize that you are responsible and have the power to change the programming. And lastly, principle number three, let everyone else off the hook. Seek to make yourself happy. Do not look to others to make yourself happy. I must say thanks to Eva Ford, my friend, for helping me to 
shed, you know, some light on this topic. You are welcome. And of course, on behalf of the production team, this is Nurin Daily saying bye until next time. And guess what? Work on making those relationships better. Strengthen the ties that keep us together. Sisters and brothers, friends forever, strengthening the ties that keep us together.